Hello people of YouTube and social media. Uh, this is uh, the third episode of my little series called Life Cycle. We have done uh, the Stonefly, we have done a Caddy's Life Cycle and today we're going to do the Mayfly Life Cycle. And I have chosen a pretty uh, common species of Mayflies. This is the Heptagenia sulfurea, uh, which is Latin for uh, the yellow may fly. Uh, this is kind of common in Europe, especially in, in the north, but also um, further, further south. And I think you can find it also in some other places in, in the world. Uh, never mind, uh, you can tie a lot of different mayflies. Uh, in this way uh, that I will choose both from the Nymph Stadium, the Merger, um, the uh, Dun, the Crippled and the Spent. Um, like uh, we done in the different videos, we will of course start with the Nymph. So, let's go! The hook I'm using here is Arex Freshwater 561 or 560, it doesn't matter, but this is a size uh, uh, 14, which I think is a nice size for, for this kind of mayfly. And I use a 60 knot thread in a tan, which I think is kind of nice to this fly. And for the tail, thing is with uh, a lot of mayflies they have uh, three uh, uh, tail fibers uh, but the yellow mayfly when it's a uh, nymph it has three but as an adult it only has two but we will take three strands, three fibers of uh, pheasant and tie it in. And then I will use a V-rib nymph in the color yellow. And I tie it in and then stretch it and walk with the thread back to the hook band. And then going further. And then I try to make a little bit of taper. This kind of nymph is a clinger, which m means that it's placed to rocks or on the ground it's kind of flat but it's kind of difficult to make a flat nymph with this kind of technique so i just to try to make it as nice and tapered as i can and then i use like three or oh, oh, sorry then I use like 10 12 fibers of the pheasant again when I have tied in this this is gonna be for the back And then for the thorax, I use a SLF squirrel dubbing, which I love. This is the light olive, because the nymphs is a little bit darker than the than the adult insect. Don't use too much dubbing. But then, then don't use too little either. But it's easier to 
get some more than less. Then I use a dabbing brush just to pick out some fibers. <coughs> and then for the uh, for the legs I use uh, some kind of softer hackle. In this case I used use a uh, hen saddle. I remove the fibers first, like this, and then I use my scissor to cut it, so I have this V instead. And I try to attach them as good as I can, like this. And then I just pull this until I'm happy with the length. And I tie it in. And I just cut the stuff I don't want to. Perfect. And I just fold this, those pheasant fibers over and tie them in. I have to build up a little head and we finish. Then to get a little bit more of strength to this I use a UV glue. You don't need to do it but I think it makes the Fly hold up for some more fish. So there is the nymph and let's go and tie the emerger. This is one of my favorite uh, st stadiums to fish when it's hatching um, yellow mayflies. So this is a nice fly to have a couple of. I use a, you can either use a poly yarn, sparkle emerger yarn, or uh, antron, but I, in this case I use a poly yarn in the color brown, and I start to tie it in like this, because these fibers are going to be legs. And then I use the thread, go back to the hook band and a little down, and then front again and I use the v-rib as we used in the nymph again just to make a segmentation to the fly tie it in and goes back and try to make nice turns with the thread so you can hide the most of the v-rib and then you just do not overlapping turns, leave a little space between the rib. I think this gets a nicer look to the fly. And when you're about here, you do an overlapping turn and then tie it in. I like to have this kind of material in the back so it breaks the surface a bit. But then you want this to float just in the surface film. So I use uh, at first two fibers of a normal natural uh, colored CDC. I use two feathers which I put together. 
makes like a little I don't know what to say it isn't a shock but something close to that and I tie it in like that this is making the fly lace lay correctly in the in the surface film and then I use a Swiss CDC this is the color light brown which is very nice for this kind of fly and also here I take two feathers because you want to have this flotation in the fly and I put them together this is doesn't have to be good looking or anyway just tie them in and I pull them like that and then I tie them in with some more thread wraps and then I cut these fibers off because there's no use for these ones and then again I use this SLF scroll dub in the color light olive and builds up some kind of forex perfect then you can use your dubbing brush just to pick out some fibers and then I fold this over and I push it a little bit back so it's creating a little bubble of the CDC I pick it up and tie it in so you will have it look like this and then you cut away these ones and then you take these fibers and split them so you kind of get the same amount of fibers on every side tie them back same here tie them back yet again I use just a tiny amount of this dubbing to build up the head and we finish And then you just cut these legs. And of course you need to cut the shuck. And there we have the merger. And let's go and tie the done. So this is a kind of a extra info or story from my side. It's that I never ever caught a big trout on the dun. So I rarely fish the dun actually. Uh, it's the emerger state or the spin, spent spinner state or also the crippled uh, which I have the best luck especially the crippled uh, and I will tell you the story when we'll tie the crippled mayfly after this fly. But mostly the when the yellow mayfly dun emerges, uh, emerge to and become a dun. They mostly fly away very very fast. So I think the big trout really doesn't care about trying to catch or eat the the, the dun. So this is a, a size 14, 501 freshwater, and for the tail I use Coq de Leon, which is very nice. Cut away that one. You can tie this with parachute hackles or hackled or uh, whatever you want, but I like to tie and fish this if I do uh, as um, no hackles. For the body, I use capoc uh, dubbing. This is the color sulfuria from Semperfly which is a very nice and easy dubbing to, to tie with. Um, 
so I use it a lot to to different kind of mayflies, and it has uh, some people say at as that it will float better than a lot of other materials. And of course, if you just have a, the right floatant, it will do. But many others as well. But it's a nice material. I like it a lot. And I go through front and I leave about two millimeters, three millimeters, where we're gonna tie in um, the wings. Here I use the same color as we used to the um, uh, to the merger. This is the Swiss CDC light brown. And I take two feathers and tie them in. cut away the rest and here for the thorax you can use the SLF squirrel but I like to use Senu uh, Lace Dab in the color light olive which has a little little bit of flash in the dubbing which I like to have uh, I think it some way attracts the fish as well And then you just build up. And try to get the feathers correct. So you have dubbing in the front and in the back. It's a very simple fly and you can tie this in a lot of different colors for other mayfly uh, species. But yeah. It's kind of simple. And then if you want to have a nice shape of the wing, you just use a scissor with long blades and you can cut it like this. So that was the done. And now let's tie one of my favorite uh, stadiums of this fly, which is the Mayfly uh, Yellow May uh, Crippled. Here we also use a size 14. Oryx Freshwater 501 same thread no problemos and for this we will also have the same tail which is Coctalion Some people they also attach a little bit of, of uh, yarn here and we can do it with this fly. This is the same we had before. I really don't know but it seems to imitate the shock in some way and then you just cut it. For the Body here we also use the Kapok dubbing in the color Sulfurea from Semperfly. Try to make a nice taper. And here you also leave about three millimeters. And for the cripple, I don't want to use a lighter uh, CDC. I want to use a little bit darker. I don't know why, but that has been the the color that have been like super great for me. So I promised you a little story. And this fly have been a super fly for me for many years um, when I visited. Russia, uh, the Kola Peninsula for a couple of years ago, I hooked the trout of my dreams, uh, a fish close to six and a half, seven kilos, which is around uh, like 16 pounds, 15, 16 pounds. Uh, and 
yeah, it was really nice and it took uh, this kind of fly. Uh, so it's been a, like a confidence fly for me for many years. Uh, and I, the latest years I had really, really nice fishing with this kind of fly. At some way, fish, the, the, the fly lays perfect in the water and the, the fish likes it. So I tied in the CDC like this and you saw that I left a little bit of, of CDD, CDD, CDC there for some kind of also flotation. And then you can use some kind of, of uh, uh, cockhackle. I, in this case it's a grizzly variant but you can use a brown, black, grayish uh, depending what you want. And here in the thorax Again, I used to send you laser dub in the color uh, light olive. I think it's uh, a really nice uh, color and nice dubbing for for this. And then you just some people hackle this too close, but I need I need or want some space because then I noticed it lays much better in the water and it uh, gets a nice uh, much nicer like contrast at some way and I think fish likes that better than this Facebook hackles a lot of people use so don't over hackle it this should be like legs never seen a normal fly with those Facebook hackles So this is one of my favorite mayfly uh, imitations. So let's go to the uh, spent fly. Here again, size 14, freshwater 501 or 500, doesn't really matter. It's the dry fly hook. And here for the tail I use the Coq de Leon and now I take a little bit more fibers for have a better flotation and then I use the thread and lift those up and go with the thread under to have a little more spread on the tail fibers like this. Then it will float better. Then yet again you can use the Capoc dubbing. This is gonna have a really, really slim body. So don't, really don't overdo it with the dubbing. And then I'll leave about millimeters there again and for the wing I use this material called sparkle or murder yarn but you can use poly yarn or some other wing material if you want but um, yeah I think synthetics is somewhat better sometimes but on the sometimes I also use CDC for this but it takes more time and you have to be more accurate with how you tie them in so I will use show you this. You tie it in and then you just 8 turns, give it 8 turns and then you uh, yet again use the senior laser dub for the thorax. The light olive is a little bit darker than the cap buck uh, sulfurea which is nice and also like I said have this little flash you build up the thorax and then we finish the fly And then you just take the fibers of this yarn 
and when you're happy with the length of the wing, you just cut it. And if you want, you can also like trim the wing a little bit to have it perfect. So there's the spent yellow may fly. So I really hope you liked this uh, episode as well. Please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to, you can also share it on social media, uh, Instagram, Facebook, or yeah, whatever you want to. Uh, and if you want uh, to see something else, please leave a comment and uh, I will try to um, fix it. Okay, so if you don't subscribe, please do that as well. And uh, to the next time. Tie and die.